rightly situated in your real position, in your real identity, in your real self. Uh, this is yoga. This is buddha, buddhi yoga, Krishna calls it. Buddhi yoga means linking your intelligence with Krishna and actually relying on Krishna's intelligence instead of your own intelligence. See, Krishna in Bhagavad Gita and other Vedic scriptures is giving his intelligence. He says, this is my opinion. You want to know my opinion? I think... Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so we should want to know Krishna's opinion because Krishna's opinion really matters. Not our opinion. Our opinions don't have any weight at all because most of our opinions are based on illusion. Huh? We identify with... Oh, here's another good example from my life. My uh, problems with my god brothers. As long as I tried to measure my self-realization by what my god brothers thought, I was a failure. A complete failure. As long as it mattered to me what they thought, or as long as it mattered to me uh, their opinion, or their philosophy, or their style, then I was a failure, because I was measuring myself by their standards. You see? As soon as I said, no, wait a minute. Just because we're initiated by the same spiritual master, that doesn't mean that I have to be responsible to them. I mean, they think that it, that's so, but I don't have to think that. I can think differently. I can change my consciousness. I can, I can re let go of my identification with these people. I don't have to identify with them. I don't have to consider that what they think is an important factor in my life. I can start all over again with a blank slate and I can look at things in my own way. And how do I want to look at things? I want to look at things according to what the scriptures say. Huh? This is called Shastra Chakshus, seeing through the eyes of the scriptures. I don't want to see through anybody else's eyes. Huh? What if they're wrong? And when I went back and I read the scriptures minutely, scrutinizingly, uh, scrutinizingly means you look up the meaning of every single word in the dictionary. Scrutinizingly. Hmm? When you read the scriptures like that, then you get some really deep insights. And you start to realize that the way that people understand these scriptures is not actually what the scriptures are saying. They're saying something actually much deeper, much more profound. So what the scriptures are saying is that you should take back all these pieces of yourself that you have given away when you identified with these other things. You take back your attention, you take back your consciousness, you take back yourself, and you keep yourself only to yourself. And that is a very, very important part of self-realization. Because how can you become Krishna conscious if you don't own your consciousness? If your consciousness is invested in this thing and that thing and all these other things and these different people and their opinions and what you think that they think about what you think that's like a hall of mirrors. That's like insane. Huh? Well, what do you think about what I think you think about what I think? <laughs> it's like, that's like craziness. I mean, that's like, duh. Huh? You know? <laughs> what does the same pe person think? Well, if he really wants me to know what he thinks, he's going to tell me. Otherwise, it's none of my business. It's none of my business what you think. It doesn't affect me. You can think anything you want. You can think the moon is made of green cheese or that, you know, little men from Mars are controlling the television or whatever. You, you can think whatever you like. It's fine. Uh, and I can think whatever I like. So I'm going to think what's in these scriptures 
because these scriptures contain the absolute truth. And I've proved it again and again and again by my experience in self-realization. And by now, I'm far beyond anybody being able to prove otherwise. So that's what I'm going to think. And I'd be glad to hear your opinions, but you know, don't expect me to accept them if they're different from what's in the scriptures. Because I have seen again and again and again that the scriptures are right when everybody else is wrong. Everybody is saying one thing, scriptures are saying something else, I'll go with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been proven again and again and again that they come from a superior intelligence, a higher intelligence than human. So, I will take back all my little pieces of myself that I'm identified with here and there and projecting there and here. And, and I'm going to take all those back in myself and I'm just going to sit there with them. And I, I did this actually over a period of six or eight weeks when I attained Paramatma realization. I actually, I just sat there. I just sat there and did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 18 hours a day for six weeks it was great I got fired from my job my girlfriend left me um, <laughs> my car got all cobwebs on it I mean you know I would get up maybe you know, you know I'd eat a little lunch you know a little cook a little ramen or something like that you know something very simple then I'd sit back down again and just do nothing. How much nothing can you stand? I can stand 18 hours a day of it. Quite nicely. So after six or eight weeks of that, one day, if I had just had lunch, and I was getting ready to sit back down again. And I felt somebody in the room. I, oh, I had gotten, by this time, I had gotten so sensitive. I knew the position and the consciousness of every person in the apartment building where I was living in Portland. I knew when they came. I knew when they went. I knew what they were doing. I could, you know, I was so aware. So... You know, and I had had the apartment locked. The front door had been locked for like, I don't know, three or four days. I hadn't gone anywhere. I was just sitting there, literally. I mean, I had a stock of food and stuff, just sitting. And I felt somebody in the room. I said, wait a minute, didn't I lock? The, the door's locked, isn't it? Yeah, I went over to check the door. Yeah, the door's locked. Who's here? I knew somebody was, was there. I could feel them. And all of a sudden I felt like this tap on my head. And boom! All this energy. I mean, it was like Kundalini and, and nuclear fusion and everything all at one time. And I became like instantly super conscious of everything. I mean, I could feel the, the life force in the plants and in the stone and even in the walls of the building. And outside, I could see, you know, I, the, the, I could see the ocean of milk. I could see Mahavishnu. I could see, I could see everything in about six dimensions all at once. And it was ecstatic. It was like, wow, this is great. Yeah. So... Um, and this lasted, it lasted for days. Actually, I just, it's still there. I just got used to it. I got used to it. This was on December 21st, 1984. <laughs> I will always remember this day. And after about three or four hours, I was still like, wow, this is great. Wow, you know. I hadn't had, I mean, hadn't had any drugs or anything like that. I was completely like, this was just natural. So I said, okay, I'm going to go down to the tea store. I'm going to, there was a little tea shop in the neighborhood where people would hang out like that. This is Portland, so it was like really hip and cool and organic. Okay, so I went down to the tea, tea shop. 
and uh, they come in the door, you know, and uh, the plants were like, hi. <laughs> I was like, yeah, hi, hi, plants. And the people were like dead. They were like cardboard cutouts. They weren't, they weren't like, they were just flat. They weren't even three dimensional. They were just like flat. And they refused to acknowledge my presence. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm here. You're not going to look at me, are you? Oh, okay. So there was a there was a line of people, you know, to to put the hot water in their teacup and you know put the, put their teacup and the sugar and the honey and all that stuff, you know. And then there's 